Hi, and welcome to today's feature, which, as you can see from my little background here, is going to be about pulver and life lover. To be more specific about some of the origins and uh, how the first album came to be. And uh, these are my recollections, my hazy memory, considering this is uh, between 13 and uh, 14 years ago. And uh, we didn't uh, take distance from any forms of intoxication back then. Which is obviously where the term uh, narcotic metal came from. But then let's go back. Before I discovered this little valley, which I now unfortunately have rebuilt into something more like a rest place or camping site. So the meadow with all the daisies is now gone and uh, replaced with uh, gravel and dirt because obviously it's easier to maintain. So I'm glad that I was able to take those pictures of my friend Elinor 13 and a half years ago that has the very iconic cover pictures from uh, the Pulver Sessions. And as you can see this rock hasn't changed much. A bit of less moss. Happens with years. Either it grows or it doesn't. So... I plan to... Uh, meet some of my friends from uh, Life Lover that were active or not active during those days and have their recollections about those times and uh, how uh, they were getting introduced to the band and uh, eventually Joined is not the right term because uh, Jonas or B had the, the habit of adding members that he thought would fit into our concept. And uh, it's not a big secret that he was a huge Slipknot fan. So of course he considered that the more members we had similar to their amount of members, the better. So uh, we started Life Lover as a two-piece and before I knew it we were four people and then five. But uh, some of those guys have become some of my closer friends over the years, so I can't complain. Cal would definitely not exist without that kind of anti uh, leadership kind of attitude because I was thrown in into the frontman seat pretty early in the band but that was never the intent in the beginning we made a more even split of who composed the tracks and we didn't even plan on making an actual full album when we started the band. It was more like a, a way for us to let off ideas that felt a bit too personal or even too mundane to add into our main bands which back then and for me still is hypothermia and for Jonas was Dimium, which is how I got to know him. Because before I released the first and second album of Dimium 
on tape and CD together with Jonas and through my label Insect Insight that I ran between 2004 and 2007 approximately. Uh, he was uh, one of uh, my returning customers. He used to buy stuff for me every month. And uh, he also had his new project Dimhim back then, which he was very interested in getting signed to my label. So we got in touch and we emailed a lot back and forth. And he sent new versions of his songs to me. And I liked them a lot. Because uh, they had a kind of craft vibe going on, but a bit more uh, old school black metal in uh, their execution, which I thought was interesting. Because no one does craft better than craft, and no one does. Dark Throne better than Dark Throne, but he found he found something in between there. So uh, I offered to do uh, guest vocals, or he requested me as well to do guest vocals. We came kind of came up with that uh, at the same time uh, that we felt that it was about time after being in touch for around a year or so. Uh, through email to finally meet and uh, for me to do uh, some guest vocals on the second album of Dimhim and uh, that was the first time we met which uh, was in uh, the summer of 2005 and in the same evening or night that we recorded my guest vocals for that album we made the first uh, tape recording, a double-sided live tape recording which with two channels uh, of uh, guitar improvisation and uh, very rough vocals from uh, having a night out in the woods. Uh, the first thing we did when we met each other uh, at the station was to just shake hands and go to the car, which belonged to his drummer, or his drummer's mother. And uh, that drummer is actually the backstory to why we got the name Life Lover. <laughs> and I'm getting back to that in uh, just a minute or two. Uh, his name was Alex, and he called himself Nordskjell, or North Soul, in that band. Him. and he drove us to the old uh, house that belonged to Jonas's father where we uh, stayed for a night and a day to record and finish the second Dimhim album and then if, if we were motivated or inspired we would do something more uh, which we of course did and uh, the first thing we did when we arrived at that house was to grab a razor reach and cut each other while drinking about half a bottle of whiskey. And uh, some people know this, many don't. But uh, Jonas had uh, a GAD, uh, Generalized uh, Anxiety Disorder. He had a very hard time being around people, uh, unless he was fucked up. So when we arrived at that house, the whiskey bottle was all, all, already half empty. But uh, he's a big guy, strong build, uh, tall guy, so you couldn't really notice anything different about him, except the classic introvert black metal guy. So I didn't really think more about that. But uh, yeah, we kept drinking uh, and I had been the days before in Denmark uh, to see Siguros, so I had a lot of beer with me. 
tell you in a moment how that turned out. So, with a fridge full of beer and vodka and whiskey and a fist full of razor blades and scalpels, we turned that place into a slaughterhouse. And uh, it uh, looked like uh, scenes from a horror movie. <laughs> because, yeah, you can't imagine how how much two bodies with open veins will drip, and uh, many Swedish houses are white in the interiors, so you can imagine. And it didn't get better because after a while we decided to go out in the woods and uh, go to an abandoned house that he knew about. Uh, so we went there. And uh, sometimes intoxication makes me very self destructive, especially back then, 15 years ago. So since I didn't have razors or scalpels at me at the moment, I decided, well, glass would be fine. So I smashed the window and uh, that cut up most of my fingers. And that's one of the reasons why the first two Life Lover promo tape tracks are so minimalistic. Not only because we adored the first album, Dark Metal by Bethlehem, but also because we simply were so hangover and cut up that we could barely use our fingers to start with. And every time I would move my finger across the guitar, some of the wounds would reopen. And after recording those tracks, the, the guitar was obviously completely covered in blood and that's the kind of atmosphere that you almost need to have to really appreciate those tracks because they are so completely different to anything else that we did afterwards which took yeah around a year after that to record because we we started hanging out after that and uh, as I mentioned in uh, previous future videos about Schöld and Rockbotswalsen, Cold and the Razor Waltz by Hypothermia uh, that Jonas B was present at recording because he was yeah. There is my friend, but also used to help us out because I borrowed his guitar at that moment and uh, so Schöld Rock was Valsen, the split with Hypothermia and Dimium as well as Pulver and Erotik are all recorded with the same guitar and I also borrowed his uh, uh, recording interface. I don't remember the brand. Could be Zoom or something like that. It was a four track recorder, which we used to record both Schöldr och Svalsen, but also Pulver. Before that eventually broke. So uh, we had a new eight track device from recording Erotik and Forward from that. <clears throat> and Oliver was it started as like a demo or EP we had two or three ideas for songs that we recorded just the week after returning home from Östersund uh, which is where I recorded those albums with Hypothermia 
think it's it's uh, 900 kilometers from uh, where I'm standing now and maybe half of that from uh, where Jonas used to live in uh, one of the suburbs of Stockholm he had a room in his mother's apartment where we would uh, do all kinds of madness and uh, yeah when we started recording the first songs that we recorded with Life Over was Nux Scott, uh, Stockholm, and uh, he had already began MS Salmonella, but for that, at that moment, it was intended for Gimhum, but. That was before we added the piano and he decided of course that wow this creates a perfect transition between the bit silly songs and the more serious songs of the album and uh, at that moment with the music we haven't really recruited any other members 1853 and LR wasn't really in the band yet, but we knew them, and uh, back then Eller had another band called Sjukdom, Disease, Illness or Sickness, and actually the logo for that band or project that he back then had with another friend from the north uh, is in the booklet of the, our last album, Sjukdom. A little easter egg for you. Take a look and you'll see. If you don't have a physical copy, you can easily find it on Discogs or Google. And uh, yeah, back then we used to have some weird ideas uh, about a bit inspired, of course, by things like Fight Club, uh, by spreading some form of chaos around the world. Uh, I don't know if it happened frequently or not, but before we used many of the lyrics for uh, Pulver, they were uh, made as pamphlets printed to be distributed through psych wards around Sweden. And I don't know how many of those were made, but eventually we had a big enough pamphlet and we decided among our favorites of those lyrics which fit with which songs and uh, after sending out the recordings we made of Stockholm and Axcott to some of our friends they quickly got shared to some record labels and uh, they re requested from us that we would record a whole album we didn't really have anything better to do, so we said, yeah, sure, why not? Let's see where this can take us. And uh, there wasn't really any bigger plan than that. We, we never planned further than finishing one album and hoping that we would survive until we would make the next. That was always the biggest thing that Jonas said around during each recording that oh, I hope I survive until this gets released and uh, I don't consider that a sustainable way to live which is which it isn't but a sustainable way of living wasn't really on his mind to him life lover was everything and eventually it turned into something above and beyond him that he couldn't exist without and of course life ever couldn't be exist without him either because he can, for each song that he composed uh, he became a better songwriter a really really great recorder and producer and uh, life ever would never be the same without him 
So that's why we ended it after its passing. And uh, as most of you know, uh, Pulver was released pretty quick after we started recording it and uh, it was made in uh, three different presses which should be 500 copies each through uh, Go to Warwick's records I think it was three, at least two presses because we made uh, the second edition cover different from the first edition switching the cover photo from the meadow to uh, this background here, this rock with my friend Eleanor covered in blood. Pretty sweet, I know. And uh, eventually when uh, Go to Works became a bit less active for various reasons that I'm not going to get into because that's none of my business really. We uh, picked up a license deal with uh, Osmos Productions from France and uh, since, then, since then I've been uh, keeping uh, the album in print and uh, at the 10 year anniversary three years ago we made a digipack version of the album with the original cover photo and uh, also of course uh, vinyl reissues because it's better that you get them uh, with the original master and original design and pictures uh, from the band and from the label that has the license than someone doing a bootleg of it. And uh, I'll see if I can get 1853 to uh, do a little feature together with me sometime this year. Because we have a lot to talk about and uh, we usually meet a few times a year. Because we always have a good time together always have while uh, other members from that time or some of our friends from that time are no longer my friends for also reasons I'm not going to get into what I can tell you about the recordings and more of the backstory of the name Life Flower is that we didn't start calling it narcotic metal for no reason we used to challenge ourselves by seeing how uh, how high we could uh, increase our tolerance of different medications and uh, anything that would uh, get you intoxicated, drunk, high, you name it. We, we would uh, get as close as possible to the lethal dose or exceed it. Just because, just because. And I sincerely don't recommend it. Uh, that's that's necessarily not a good way to uh, get a new band started but it worked for us because Jonas had a crazy tolerance and I have high metabolism I can process a lot of shit And uh, 
that's also tying back a bit to what you can see in the booklets many af classic after party pictures and also just a general suburban misery and uh, different visual versions of melancholy and most of the recordings back then where we changed some of that over the years simply to make a more high quality and professional product but still about yeah definitely at least 90 percent of all material ever recorded with live flower was during being incredibly high or hungover and especially during the recordings of Pulver I made it a rule to either be drunk, high or hungover or all of them when I would make a recording that's why the vocals are a bit over the top theatrical, dramatic you name it but most of all they are completely honest and that's one of the key points of life lover to have no borders no rules to do whatever we want whatever we feel like no genre restrictions distractions restrictions whatever no borders that's why there are so many genres mixed into the album of Pulver and why we got the name Life Lover in the beginning was because one of the labels that we interacted with back then or that rather interacted with us uh, was called Death Propaganda silly name I know and he released some stuff mostly tapes of various underground black metal bands like Dom Dracul or Holocaustia and uh, uh, Seven Inch with Angst and Diabolicum that was yeah it didn't get further than that really and uh, back then the death the black metal of death death worship kind of scene with dissection and related bands were a big thing so uh, he and other people tried to call us out on the internet for not being uh, true enough and not worshipping death so he called us fucking life lovers before we even had a name for the band uh, when we were still just Kim and uh, Natdal Night Valley B of hypothermia and dimium and when we started making the songs of Pulver we just felt well what should we call this and uh, we already knew that people wouldn't take it serious or like it we made it for us so we felt like sure let's call it life flower and that moment a legend was born
And that, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, friends and folks, is what leads us to uh, the end of this feature about a certain era between 2005 and 2006 of Life Lover. And as you can see, the meadow isn't here anymore. And my friend, uh, who otherwise would be sitting here next to me, is uh, since several years back not with us anymore either. That's a part of life. So, uh, one thing that I remembered that I forgot when I was making the video yesterday evening at this location at the rocks here behind me that was, as mentioned, featured on uh, the artwork of Pulver is uh, that uh, I wouldn't mind sharing some of the remaining backstory from that era. Like a little conclusion to all of this. Which is about our choice of uh, pseudonyms or aliases. Which is something that I've always been against using because I am always transparent about myself as an artist. I've always had the same email addresses over the years since 2001 and uh, they have always been public to some extent either completely or for those that need to reach me I'm not really hiding. I'm not just making an effort to be out there really because that's not my main interest or concern those who find me will and uh, as some of you know I'm not using pseudonyms for any other bands that were projects that I'm in I'm always myself Kim but why we choose to have something more anonymous when we started Life Flower was because, as some of you may know, a very common practice among uh, distribution places, underground distros, record stores and record labels, they like to uh, mention any other band that the members are in even though it's completely unrelated to uh, what the actual album presents, represents and so on and because we wanted Life Lover to be the complete opposite of what Hypothermia or Dimhum is or was we wanted every new listener fan or hater to uh, judge Pulver and Life Lover on its own merits. And I think that went pretty well. Because we didn't reveal who we are, were or are until uh, a few months after the second album, Eretik, a bit less than a year after Pulver. And uh, that's also the, the main thought and reason behind my pseudonym, the brackets. Because 
as you can see, it's, it's nothing really. It's the closest thing to not having a pseudonym. That's why he shows it. It has no relation to anything else. And of course, for those who haven't already figured it out, B's name was Jonas Bergqvist, and B is simply the first letter for his surname. And any of the other members' names are pretty basic as well. But uh, any further information about that that people don't already know is something that I will uh, gladly discuss next time I'm meeting my friend Johan, 1853. I'm not sure where or when, but it's going to happen and it's going to be lovely. I hope you look forward to it and will appreciate it. With that said, thank you all for watching. I sincerely appreciate a lot and uh, if you're interested in uh, more videos like this we have uh, we or I have uh, my own or our own YouTube channels here which this is uploaded to so if you subscribe you will be able to see more content like this and if you uh, click on the bell for notifications, you uh, are even more sure to not miss it. And of course, I'll do my best to, uh, when time and inspiration strikes me, also share this on places like Facebook and Instagram. But once again, that's not my main priority. And uh, if you're interested in uh, supporting me to do more videos or Q&A videos or even travel to uh, some different cities or countries to interview other people about things that I find interesting and of importance when it comes to uh, life, depression, music, art or anything in between or beyond it. Uh, I. Uh, hope that you can uh, support us on uh, Patreon and if you want uh, vinyls or tapes or CDs of Life Lover or my other bands they are available at my store in Squarespace and uh, all of this is uh, linked below in the description of this video so once again thank you all for listening and watching take care out there and see you soon.